So the more I got to working with goats and the more I got to learning about them, they're the second easiest meat to digest behind lamb. Okay. They are one of the most nutrient dense meats. They're one of the highest in iron and highest in your other minerals. Okay. I will tell you, I, I know what I remember, and that was the fact that there's two uh, 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 livestock you can raise that are sustainable uh, on, a, on a homestead or on a property. Uh, one of those is chickens, and one of those was goats. Yes. Yeah. They are the two most sustainable right. in there because they forage some for themselves so well. OK. And, and uh, you know, if you let those those of you that have raised chickens or ever eaten any chickens, if if you have a cage, if you eat a cage raised or a, a farm raised chicken, they don't taste as well as one that's been raised out there on the pasture. That's been able to right. forage and graze for itself. Not only is that the taste difference, but you're going to have a richer vitamin, a more a more nutritious meat. Because that animal is foraging and looking for what the creator is providing it to eat. Now, you may have some chicken pellets, and, and I do. I've got chicken pellets and stuff in there. You know, it's a self-feeder. But you open the door to my chicken coop, and my chickens are flying out. You know, <laughs> they're hunting for bugs, and they're hunting for scratchings and everything. Okay? They would rather eat outside than they had inside. Okay? Right. So you're going to get a more nutritious meat that way. Okay. And and chickens are, are fairly easy animal to raise. Okay. Right. I call I call them the gateway animal to a homestead. Because right. everybody starts off raising chickens. Okay. <laughs> uh, I did that myself working on a chicken yeah. tractor. <laughs> I've and I've you know, I've raised on a farm, guys. I've raised just about everything. I've raised I've raised rabbits, I've raised pigs, I've raised cattle, I've raised horses, I've raised llamas, I've had you just name it, I've probably raised it. Okay. Yeah. Right. I've raised sheep and I like sheep and there's certain ground that sheep's really good for. Okay. Right. But where I live in Oklahoma, you know, I live in the Osage Hills. We've got a lot of scrub brush. We've got a lot of weeds and woody plants and things like that. Well, that's what goats love. Right. And so we started raising goats. We had goats on the place. Maybe to help clean up. Right. <laughs> and good at that. so, yeah, they're, they're, they're awesome. I mean, I've even got pictures of where we had hot wire fence and had the goats and, and, and a wildfire came through and stopped at the hot wire fence hmm. because of the grazing that the goats, had, they didn't graze it down to bare ground. Right. But they had taken and eaten the leaves off the ground. They liked those, you know, there was green grass there, but, but they're, they're used a lot too in, 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 in fire control. So the more I got to working with goats and the more I got to learning about them, they're the second easiest meat to digest behind lamb. Okay. They are one of the most nutrient dense meats. They're one of the highest in iron and highest in your other minerals. Hmm. So that's one of the things that moved me over to it because I eat a lot of deer. I, I love right. deer meat. And because uh, it's, it's a much healthier meat. It's a much cleaner meat. The beef right. that I eat, is all grass raised, okay? And so goats just, they just happen to fall right in there great for me because it's a more heart healthy. Uh, they're, they're just not as much fat in it. Now, you got to cook it a little bit different, okay? Right. You can't cook it hard and fast. you got to cook it low and slow. Right. But it's so much easier. You know, if I was raising cattle and I had a 1,200-pound steer, guys, I don't have the facility Right. To be able to process a steer like that, and most but people you know, don't. I think. No, they don't. But you know, I can process a goat pretty easy and pretty quick. Right. And I can keep enough of it, you know, in a refrigerator if I got it, or in a coal box or something like that, enough till we've eaten that whole animal. Right. You know, if I had to can the meat for a twelve hundred pound steer, th that meat would go bad before I could get it all canned. Right. But if I'm yeah. canning a goat, I can get that done. Okay. Right. So it just made sense to me to do that. So I looked at different breeds. Um, I researched a lot. I looked at the Spanish. I, I looked at the Kiko. I looked at the boar. I looked at savannas. Uh, I looked at crosses between those breeds. I looked at the Tennessee meat goat. 
I looked at the text master. And what I start actually started off with, and I tell everybody else, don't go buy a hundred go buy hundred dollar goats if you can find them okay it's hard to find now but don't go buy a thousand dollar goat because there's going to be a learning curve right you're just going to have to learn so it's a lot easier to lose a hundred dollar goat than it is a thousand dollar goat okay sure. so you know buy some and then start building up your breeding stock and and that's what we did we started off with boar kiko cross Okay. okay, I've had I've had full blood boars. I don't want the boar people mad at me, but I'm sorry. Uh, they they have too much problem with parasites, too many feet problems. I got to trim their feet too many times. You know, I've got or I had two full blood boars on my place that I was using in our breeding program, and I lost one of those does this year. Barber pole worms. I couldn't get her over it, and and I think I'm pretty good at that. And you look at the rest of my Textmaster does out there, my Textmaster cross does, and they were fat and sassy. Nothing right. wrong with them. They're just so much more parasite resistant. And you got to think, how much input do you want to put into these animals? The right. least amount of input, the more profit. Right. Plus, the Textmasters, the Textmaster is actually a combination over several generations of a Tennessee meat goat and a boar. And with the right breedings, I do not know. As far as I know, there's only two people in the United States that know that formula. The huh. lady that actually started the breed and the lady that worked with her, which is my mentor, Pat Cotton. Hmm. And Pat hasn't told me that breed, that, that combination. And I'm not going to ask because I'm not there yet. When, when she, she right. decides she wants to tell me, she'll tell me. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. All right. But we have found because of the genetics and what they've done with this, there is a four to one muscle to bone ratio. And that's and huge. Yes. Yes. I, I can take I can take my text masters to processing and I will get 36 to 40 percent of life weight packaged out deboned. Mm -hmm. And I know that you don't get that at that at rate at any at much else. Well, cattle's 30, 33 on good cattle. Right. Okay. Uh, and I run the numbers. I mean, I know, I mean, I, we, I weigh mine a day after they're born. I either get a 60 or a 90 day weight. I get a 120 day weight. I get a winging weight. I get a weight when they go to, to processing uh, before they go across the, you know, the slaughterhouse. Once they're right. hanging on the rail and once they're packaged, I know my numbers all the way through. And they have proven better. And I can tell you, the, those that have more Textmaster influence, I have a lot more meat. Those that have some of the other influence more, the carcass doesn't yield as well. Okay. So from a homesteading perspective, you're not eating a lot of bone. Now, you right. can make bone broth and things like that, but you're not eating a lot of bone. You're, you're eating muscle, and that's what you want to produce. And so that's what we do. Uh, I enjoy them. Now, I would also caution people, make sure you got good fences. <laughs> yes. Good, <laughs> good fences. Okay. Oh, good fences. I thought you said dentures. <laughs> fences. Good. Make sure you got good fences because uh, goats are smart. When I first got the place, I had some holes in some fences, and they would go through one particular hole until I found it. Right. Once I found it and fixed it, then they would move to another one. I find it and fix it, then they'd move to a third one. They wouldn't go through three, all three of them and let me find them. Right. They were like, I'm not telling you about the rest of those holes. We're just going to use this one until you figure it out. So they're extremely <laughs> smart. Okay? Right. Uh, but that, that's part of the – that's. You know, that, that runs back into my health thing. If I can eat a more nutritious, more healthy meat, that's going to help my body. And I'm, and I'm going to have a better immune system out of that. Right. Plus, homesteading, it just makes sense. Right. You know, they're well, going to eat how much, other animals want. How much land would you have to have to raise um, a meat goat as a pair compared to a cow? Uh or steer generally the rule of thumb is you can raise five goats to what you can raise one cow and so how does that pair dollar and cents wise 
when it comes to uh, your actual cost for putting food on the table. I'm going to make more money on goats and people are going to work on cattle. Right. Uh, because just think about this. If, if a mama's going to produce, most mothers are going to produce you at least twins. Okay. You'll have some singles. Okay. And if I'm, if I've got five goats, let's say five goats, because mm-hmm. five to one, I got five goats. I'm going to have 10 babies. Right. Okay. And I want to sell that goat at, where's my, where's my phone at here? I didn't make sure I can run these numbers off the top of my head here. Uh, <laughs> at, uh, let's just say I get $3 a pound times 90 pounds. That's $270. Okay. Right. And that dough will, you know, will provide me 1.8 of that, you know, times 1.8. So she's provided me, you know, what's that? $540. Okay. At a sale. Mm-hmm. Right. It's going to, let's just, let's just say $500. And it's going to cost me about in hay and feed and everything else. And I, you know, cause I, so I'm putting feed into them now to produce more quality. She's right. cost me around $250. Okay. So I'm going to make about $250 per head profit on that times five. That's about $1,250. You, you can't raise a calf out on a cow for that. No. Now, right now, cattle prices are high. You might do it right now. Cattle prices are really high. But normally, no. Uh, I got to have better fences than I do for cattle. I can't run right. goats on barbed wire. Okay? Right. But... I don't have to have the expensive infrastructure that you have to have to raise cattle to work them. Right. They're so much easier to work. You can, you can work them by hand. You know, I've got a little squeeze shoot, things like that, but you know, I mean, right right now I've got 90 head on the place. Right. Yeah. That's quite a bit of herd there. So what, what would you say to people who says, you know, as opposed to buying it in a grocery store, my, my meat products, um, Compare and contrast the cost of, of buying something, say, from a larger retail outlet as to um, what it would cost for you to raise it and put it on your table. Is, oh, it, is it cheaper or just healthier? It depends on where you want to quantify cheap. <laughs> See, I look at it this way. We either, we either pay for our health now or we yeah. pay for our health later. Right. Okay. <laughs> Makes okay. sense. Right. That's just I'm, like, you know, if you don't want to eat goat meat, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you, work with some, work with some farmer rancher out there that you can buy good quality. You see how they feed them, everything else. It's going to be cheaper than you go buy it in the store. And it's right. also going to be so much more better for you than right. what you're going to get going. Guys, I, I know, I know what we did on the commercial side. I worked on that side. I know right. how much harm we gave them cattle to get them up there. If they didn't care, just run them on. I know how much antibiotics they put in those things. Okay. Right. You're eating all that. Right. You there know? it is, folks. You've right got to, you got to firsthand from somebody yeah. who's actually right. been, been in, in that bit. commercial side of things right. and, I mean, and right. have seen what happens. Right. And he goes, well, it goes back to what say. You are what you eat. Right. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Let your food be your medicine. You know. And I really take your point uh, with you can pay now or pay later. You Absolutely. Know? And when we say pay later, obviously, you know, we're talking about, you know, sure. if you eat unhealthy, you'll be unhealthy. And the doctor bills will probably be a, a whole <laughs> Pro- lot more expensive. <laughs> say than the food was if you'd have just <laughs> done yeah. it right the first time. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, I, I you know, I've, I've <laughs> wanted to get in. I mean, goats are a part of my plan because I don't have the acreage uh, to run cattle. Um, and, and, and as well as having worked in the, the poultry business and, and currently and having, uh, worked around the cattle transporting and taking them, picking them up, doing those type of things, being in the cattle business a little bit, um, as you said, the cost and profitability margins are razor thin, um, in both of those actually, and, and commercial poultry is, is, is a razor thin margin. Um, you know, the goat to me because of like i said it's a little higher now because it seems it's more popular but 
uh, it's still a lower cost entry a lot of times than other herd animals like that. Um, now I've lost 150, I've lost $150 buck. Uh, <laughs> me and my son-in-law went in, <laughs> it's either, it was either somebody got him a, got him a good, got him a buck or a uh, cow got food. One of the two happened. I'm not sure, but, uh, did not know they are a social creature and you don't just buy one, you buy a, a pair, you know, <laughs> and we bought one and put it in a pen and I learned that it doesn't matter how good the fence is. They will They're find gone. a way. Yeah. Right. And well, we lost you know, it. I'm just talking about that's an expensive lesson. Let me let me just share this with everyone because I learned about a ten thousand dollar lesson this last year. Oh, Ouch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> yeah, I kill I kill my number one buck. Probably the probably the second best textmaster buck in the United States. Uh oh. Okay. And we've been do a lot of us have been doing this for years, but he'd got sick the year before. The vets couldn't figure anything out. I mean, like two thousand dollars in vet bills couldn't figure it out. I finally got him over. He was doing great, and then he got sick about the same time again the next year, and he did recover that time. Right. And I finally, I mean, we had expert goat vets trying to figure this thing out. I mean, experts from all over the United States. I finally figured it out. When I went back to looking at all my notes and when I wormed and worked and all that stuff, and I had given him orally as a drench, I'd given him pour on wormer. We do that a lot, but his system wouldn't handle it. And essentially I cooked him chemically from his mouth to his rear and I shut his organs down. Oh my goodness. Wow. Right. Very expensive yeah. lesson. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, there's, there's some things you learn, even, even, even where I'm at right now, there's some things you learn the further up the flagpole, the lessons get more expensive. Right. Right. You know? Um, and so I wished it hadn't happened, but it happened. So, you know what? Right. I learn it. Right. I'm trying to tell everybody about it right now. Uh, if you do it, beware. Right. Right. I lost, oh. I lost an outstanding buck. You, you guys were you guys were at the Oki Homestead conference. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you happen to see the big buck that I had in the pen there at, at our booth? Big muscle son of a gun. You know, he was he was a half brother to, to my buck. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh yeah, I I, I get amazed. I, I've got a, a guy that I know that uh has a herd of, of goats, and I think he's got La Manchas is what he has. But mm -hmm. uh, totally, different. but his buck, and I remember when he got him, it was a buck, and he had a handful of does. He's got a nice herd right now, <laughs> um, and but that buck is huge and uh, very protective of his of his herd. Uh, my friend has very little work to actually do. Uh, that buck tends to take care of business. Uh, all the way around, but it is impressive how big and strong they can get. Yeah. Now that's one thing I like about the text masters. I've been in, I've been in other herds and I've had other bucks that when those does are in heat, well, you don't want to get around that because that buck, he'll get you. That's his yeah. girls. You know, Yeah. these text masters, they're so laid back. They don't care. You know, you walk up and grab a hold of him. Now you probably don't want to hold him long because he's been peeing on himself and stinky. You know, if they put that cologne right. on, you know, but right. but they're so laid back, you know. I, I love that about them. I, I won't I won't have a mean one on my place. I'm not, it's just it's right. it's too risky, you know. Right. But I I got to get I got to get rid of about twenty of them right now. My wife's already she's put her foot down. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> she said you got twenty females you're going to need to find another home for. She said we're feeding right. too many. So, so what what is good eating weight? I like 90 pounds. 90 really? pounds is a good eating weight. How long uh, does it take to get them there? Oh, anywhere from, so, you know, some of them might reach that at nine or 10 months. Some of them are 12 to 14. Okay. It right. uh, depends right. on the breeds too. But, you know, a, a 90 pound a ninety pound goat here that's got a lot of bone versus a 90 pound goat that has a four to one muscle to bone ratio, there's a lot of difference in what you get out of it. Right. You know? So you got to think about that, but uh, the market likes them about sixty-five or seventy. 
Right. Now, a lot of that market's changing, but I have found that you got about the same amount of bone, about the same amount of skin, about the same amount of internal organs at 65 pounds as you do at 90. Mm -hmm. So the difference between 65 and 90 is pretty much muscle. Right. And that's so I'm right. going to feed them a little longer, and I'm going to get more meat out of this deal. I see. Mm -hmm. And yeah. hypothetically, uh, or not so hypothetically, uh, if an individual, say, <clears throat> like me, or... How would they say it in psychology? Uh, a friend I know. That's, yeah, <laughs> asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, if 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 he wasn't into raising that, but but you you were raising it, would it be profitable for that individual, not just financially, but I mean also health wise, to purchase from somebody else already ready, and they just take it and have it processed? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I did that for I did that, that for a, a long time. Yeah, a lot you? of people would come okay. and buy animals off the farm. A lot of other people do that, or uh, you know, I might I might even carry them to the processor for them. Now they have to right. go pick them up and pay for the processing, you know. Sure. But I, you know, as a service, a lot of times I would pay them to do that. Uh, we now have our own USDA meat company, and mm -hmm. we're in a lot of the farm hub stores and things like okay. that. I think I've seen that. Yeah, right. I think I've seen uh, some of that on your channel. Yeah, uh, and and we'll yeah. have some of this meat. We'll have this meat up in Missouri, and we'll have it down in uh, McAllister. We'll have okay. a freezer there, and we'll have. Well, there you go. There we go. You, right, you get a chance to get some right there. I I know I've had it. Like I said, we shared. You know, when we were talking the other day, I've I've had it several different ways from barbecue and smoked and curry and. Uh, a lot of different ways, and I really enjoy the goat meat myself. I mean, it's, well, we make like four said, flavors of broth. Oh, okay, four flavors of broth. Okay, even better. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Besides I all the other cuts, yeah, right. right. It is a different way of cooking. Uh, you got to learn, relearn how to cook them. But uh, man, it's tasty. I, I know that. So um, I love it on barbecue myself. But you know, <laughs> um, yes. Anyway. My favorite though is if. Uh, if you let me have my way, I'm going to cook a whole goat. Right. And I'm going to cook it in a pit in the ground. Oh, right, right. Yes. That's um, the way I'm going to yeah. cook it. There you but go. that I takes a lot of time and effort. You know, yeah. I don't have a lot of time to do that, you know. Right. Um, well, just a question. I mean, you know, without, I mean, ballpark range, um, you know, for a person to get into, say, like the text master, um, you know, what kind of, I mean, is, I know you said to go with like a hundred dollar one to learn, you know, go with a cheaper breed to learn, you know, and, yeah. and I'm taking that to heart because I need to learn. Uh, but I mean, you know, uh, when somebody's looking to get into it, whether it's for their own personal meat or if they're looking in, in, into a profitability factor, I mean, you know, I mean, what kind of numbers I guess would somebody need to be looking at? On well, purpose? if you're just going to raise one to take the processing yourself, you know, those are going to be cheaper because that's, that's a terminal animal. They're going to, they're going to be, they're going to freezer camp. Okay. Right. Uh, if you're buying, buying a breeding stock, uh, that animal is probably going to run anywhere from five hundred to a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for a female, depending on if she's got registered or papered. How much? If she's fifty percent or seventy-five, or the quality of her. Okay. Right. You know, I mean, it's uh, if people come to my farm, you know, I price my animals by their quality. Right. You know, uh, and, and if I, I've got some that that may have papers that you can get papers on. Uh, but I'm gonna, she's going to sell cheaper if I don't like her. She's going to sell cheaper. So you're not going to get papers. Right. I guess I'm just telling you, she is a grade commercial. Right. OK. Uh, but <laughs> if she's really good, you know, now if I have two two outstanding individuals, outstanding and one you can follow the paper trail and ancestry on and one you yes. can't the one you can follow the paper trail is always going to bring more money just because All you right. can follow that ancestry right. i see right. okay. uh, a buck is going to run you probably a good buck a good buck can run you anywhere from 1500 to i've seen people's bucks 30 40 thousand for show bucks right you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I got I got sent pictures uh, the other day. I sold a little old buck. He was a he was a fifty percent text master buck. He was he was a good little son of a gun, and uh, he went up north to a weather breeding program, 
and they sent me pictures the other day, this little buck. He was born January, no, March the 29th. And he went in for the final drive of, show, of uh, Grand Champion. Wow. I mean, you're talking four months old. And right. she said well, he got know. beat because there was older older bucks, uh, older weathers in there. But he got beat. She sent me pictures. I, I was pretty I was pretty excited about how, how my yeah. buck passed his genetics on. Right. You That's know? a good deal. Uh, and, and they were real excited. They've kept some, some females out of him and stuff. So, right. uh, you yeah. know, that, does, well, that doesn't it. hurt the advertising. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Marketing side is real good there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I know there's there's breeds that uh, people can get into at a lower price when they're starting out, you know, uh, whether that's a key, you know, whether that's boar or that's, uh, you know, Kiko or uh, I don't know, you know, the different ones. I know like summer milk and summer more meat oriented you know, and uh, um, so, if I was going to run a straight commercial operation, I would probably run a Boar Kiko cross doe in a Texas oh. Master Buck. That would probably, if I was straight commercial, that'd probably be my dream team right there. Okay, everybody's got their own thoughts, but uh, right. I've had those, I, I've had those Kiko cross does, and I'm gonna tell you what, they're fantastic mothers. That's what I've read. That's what I've read. They're and really they, good give, they give really good milk. Right. And nothing grows any better than it does on mama's milk. That's right. And uh, so anyway, well, uh, that's just a little sample, folks, I think, of what we'll be able to get um, at uh, the Oklahoma Homestead Rendezvous. Um, and I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, I know some of the topics may be a little different at uh, Ozark and at uh, Urban Expo. Um, but uh, but I know that's particularly Oklahoma Homestead Rendezvous, that the subject of, of goats for uh, profit. Uh, meat goats for profit and and uh, mm -hmm. so that's just a little tease folks of kind of what you can learn um i mean i i'm interested in it because i've, I've been interested in goats my wife she doesn't she doesn't share my enthusiasm for the goat but uh uh, uh but uh, <laughs> i know what i've got to do on the space i have um but um so anyway I, the way we appreciate the information man we appreciate the knowledge it's been awesome um I, my my hat size grew a little bit with the knowledge expanded tonight so uh uh, they always like if I if I learn something, I feel like it's a good show. I don't care what else happened uh, if I learn something, because uh, if I learn something, that means somebody out there probably learned something, too. So, right. uh, well, I, I hope you guys do. That's what I want to do is I, I want to share my experiences and what I have learned. And not to say that your experiences are all going to be the same as mine. Right. But I know what I have learned over a period of time. Right. And uh, hopefully that'll help people. Uh, you still going to have to figure your own plan out. But, yeah. you know, don't fall in the same pothole I did. Yeah. There you go, Courtney. Expanded knowledge guaranteed. That's a fact. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, um, Dwayne, any parting comments or any final final thoughts? Well, you know, uh, guys, I'm I, I, I'm going to come back here and, and say a little bit about y'all and what you're doing. Uh, you're, you're, you're putting people out there and in front of folks, uh, people that are doers. Right not just talkers, but people that are doers and you're bringing those folks there and you're making people aware of those, uh, that information that's out there. And I appreciate that because that's what we need today. People are wanting to live a more sustainable lifestyle and they, they need to find out how to do that. And I appreciate what you guys are doing with your YouTube channel and Thank getting those you. and interviewing those people out there and, and what you stand for what you're doing so hopefully you know uh i'll have my star link here this next week and and uh right. we'll have to and, do it again. and you guys can watch a lot of videos on what we do on our youtube channel i, ha I have been out there is one video uh <laughs> i got i got one video up uh, it took forever to load so right. uh, that's one reason we're getting star link but i've got be quite looking. a bit you'll find yeah. things on bees goats uh herbal stuff foraging uh, building things, repairing things on the farm. Uh, our whole byline is, is, is uh, homesteading on a budget. Right. There you go. And uh, most of uh, us that are homesteading are homesteading on a budget. Uh, uh, that my entire, uh, my entire existence is that exact right there on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, well, bro, anything? Uh... No, just wanted to once again say thank you to Dwayne for being so gracious to share his knowledge with us. And his know, time, definitely. Not, not, you know, we don't only just learn, but, uh, you know, I feel like in this community, you know, I really want to shout out to 
uh, everybody that's, that's that's been participating in the growth Absolutely. of this community and how building this community is really important. And we actually believe that we're stronger together and Absolutely. we actually believe that we are the solution to a lot of the problems that we see going on locally yep. in our state in the United States and as a matter of fact in the entire world right. and the homestead the homesteading community exhibits everything uh, I believe that is the solution to those problems oh, and Dwayne uh, you, you know uh, you, well, you are an exceptional uh, uh, illustrator of that very fact and and once again like I said we just want to thank you for uh, you know showing up and sharing your information and the knowledge that you've got because that's what's going to do it that's what's going to pull this community together and it's going to bring things a little bit back home and as we you know and as one of the things that we say is take another link out of the chain that yep, food supply chain. chain shorten it up a little yes. get to know your local farmers yes. and uh and get some local information because there's a wealth of knowledge that, and a lot of it that we almost lost okay yep. We've yeah. become dangerously close to losing it. Yeah. And though the things that's happened to us in the past, uh, especially over the past since uh, 2020, um, you know, it as bad as it was, it's got some it's got some silver li linings in that cloud. And that silver lining is is people have Wake woken up, up a little bit. That's they're waking it. up and they're realizing that we've got to source our food a little differently for our own health and also for our own security. Right. So. If you go. don't mind, I, I'd like to, I'd like to, my last words here, I'd like to put a challenge out there for folks. Okay. Okay. Uh, I believe that for things to change, people have to change. Right. So be the change you want to see. Absolutely. That's it. hundred percent right there. Yeah. You know, it is, uh, it, it is absolutely that. I mean, if you, that, that's honestly that part of what we got us even started with seeing what we've seen and not being able to keep our mouth shut about it. Right. Um, and, and, and stumbling into the, and I say stumbling because that's literally what it was stumbling into the homestead community right. yeah. and, and finding uh, people like yourself that are living the solution. And, and that's what it matters so much. And so, yes, be the change that you want to see. And that's it. Um, well, Dwayne, again, thank you. Thanks to everybody that was in the chat. Uh, this has made a, a a great show. We haven't uh, we haven't pulled one like this one in a while, actually. But right. uh, uh, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun, um, and uh, I've enjoyed it. Like I said, a lot of knowledge. Um, we gave you the show is coming up next week. Um, Amanda Hardcastle from Hardcastle or HLC Longhorns going to be talking about her cattle. Uh, that's next Tuesday, seven o'clock, right here uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. So uh, go ahead and set your set your calendars now. Make your reminders for that next week. You'll be seeing us. Um, and I tell you what, guys, great show. And I tell you, I'm just going to roll us right on out of here. So uh, <laughs> until next time, this is the Farm to Table Direct Show. Remember, we are hashtag stronger together. It's only through the community. It's only through the strength of each other that we can overcome the things of this world. Uh, gracious, Be gracious to each other. Be kind. Be thankful for our creator, God above. And as we always say, prepare for the unexpected and keep it local.